skin and bones are not like deathly, but they are thinner than we'd like them to be, especially for this season. Good morning, beautiful girl. So we have to bring them something that's higher in fat, higher in protein, and we're gonna have to start feeding them twice a day. Oh my goodness, are you excited about, you just spit on my camera. <laughs> Man, Dixie heard twice a day and she's in, Beverly. There's literal spit on my camera right now. That is so gross. <laughs> oh my God, hold on, let me wipe it off. So, babe, we are headed to Tractor Supply. Uh, we realize as a memory packed up pop, da, 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 we realize as a memory popped up on Facebook yesterday, showing us last year what Texan family looked like, and they were a lot heavier than what they are today. And I've been paying attention and noticing, and Lester's been paying attention and noticing. People in the comments have been noticing and making comments. And Our it, cows are struggling. The cows at Longhorn Lester's are struggling. So, we are headed to go pick up a special feed that is meant to put weight on cows. And why not bring y'all with us? It says online that it's in stock. Let's hope that it is. So. Lester has come up with four different kinds, you said, right? I got two bags of four different kinds, eight bags. And each of them have the makeup of what we need. So the balance between protein and fat and fiber is critical during the season that we're in. I'll just say that. We are in the middle still of a drought. And for anybody says, I thought y'all had rain. Well, we are so, so, so far behind. But. So the crab grass that we have growing out there, when we first, when <laughs> early spring, that crab grass, which is a very good, healthy, nutritional grass for cows and horses, man, it was 12 inches tall. It to the extent it. that we actually had to mow it. We mowed it two or three times this spring. Because and, it was growing so fast, and yeah. it was, and if you let it get too long, they won't eat it. It, cha it changes into like a bitter, a bitter taste. And then the tractors came, and all around the pond, kind of like messed up that area, which still was okay because the we, front was we growing had the great. Whole front, but then, uh, of course, at that point, it stopped raining. Yeah, we feel like, well, I feel like, that basically <laughs> we dug a pond. And the rain god said, ha ha, we're not going to fill it. Now, I know that that's not what happened because it's not just about Lester and Jamie and our animals. It's affecting most of the south and certainly the west and much of the midwest as well. Maybe but, the cows for a second. I want to show you something, something that people don't understand. See how they're laying around? I do. So I think that may be one of the number one comments that I read when I show the cows lying around like that is what a great life they're living, how blessed they are to be able to be able just to lay around. But people don't realize that they're only laying around to conserve energy, to conserve. Which is sad. That's sad. Yeah, cows should not lay around so much. They're no. only laying around because they're so lacking in nutrition that they know they have to lay. And we've been feeding them. Don't get me wrong. This isn't just like we put a roll of hay out and and hope that they make it and, and whatever tiny little bits of green grass that come up that they eat it. That's that's not enough. So they get plenty of grain. They have had hay. We have, of course, supplemented the alfalfa hay that you all know about as well. But because now we're going into winter in the time where they normally are very heavy because they've eaten green grass the entire summer and they have really loaded up like you know like they, people talk about carb loading before a big race well animals that graze all summer long that are used to grazing all summer long they carb load okay they graze load we'll just say that all summer long so then when winter comes around and there's not as much green grass to forage on or no green grass to forage on and nothing to graze on that they can sustain 
they do get skinnier and then when springtime comes back around they start eating the grass again well sadly our cows and cows all over this part of texas much of texas have not had their graze loading or carb loading this summer so they're skinny and guys we say hi beautiful girl they're skinny for our cows okay so they're not like skin and bones they're not like deathly but they are thinner than we'd like them to be especially for this season good morning beautiful girl so we have to bring them something that's higher in fat higher in protein and we're gonna have to start feeding them twice a day oh my goodness are you excited about you just spit on my camera <laughs> Man, Dixie heard twice a day and she's in, Beverly. There's literal spit on my camera right now. That is so gross. <laughs> oh my God, hold on, let me wipe it off. Well, you know how when you're, you have babies, like legit babies and you get spit on and everything else? Look at this, this is the grossest thing. I don't even know what that is, but it's on me, on my camera, on my face. Gross, Dixie, that was so gross. Here she was, she was thinking that I brought her the food and the snack, but then she realized very quickly that dad was the snack man this morning. But no, what I was saying is that we are going to bump up feeding to twice a day, try to put some weight on these cows before literally everything stops becoming green at all. We have not had our first frost yet, and we are really hoping that the planting of the rye grass that Lester did out here keeps things to where they have some green to eat over the winter. It's a good forage for them as well. Um, we just need rain. We need, we have got to get rain. And uh, the other thing that Lester probably hasn't talked about much with y'all is we are really looking into systems and companies that not just do irrigation, but do pumping. And it, it could be very expensive, but if we could get pumping to the pond to fill the pond then we could also use it to irrigate and and use as a sprinkler for the rest of the land here for all the ryegrass that we planted and that will also give them a boost and to be honest with you the thing that's going to give them the most energy is anything green it's what they prefer it's what they need the most and it's what they've been lacking all year and again this is not just jamie and lester's animals but it is here and it's sad to us because here we bought this property that had beautiful beautiful grass and it was the right kind it was crab grass and and um, some saint augustine and then we had special uh, pasture grass brought in and planted if you remember we spent thousands of dollars to have hydro seeding done and it came up beautifully it was it looked like have you ever heard of the amber waves of green it looked like wave ocean waves but it was in green and it was it was unbelievable we never mowed any of that that was something that they came in they got to eat it was so nutritious and it was perfect for them all of them no one could have predicted a drought like this for the year and as I'm sitting here and I'm watching I see that you can see pearls ribs and we've known about pearl for a while in some lighting you can see Tex ribs you can certainly see his hips and you can also see Santiana's hips Gracie's doing okay so far but we can't let them get any worse and and we wouldn't be doing them justice if we did so twice a day feedings with different grains and we will find ones that are specific to what the cows like. That also fits the nutritional needs. We will also be feeding green hay twice a day. One flake per animal twice a day is not too much. Plus they will have regular hay out here to eat. So as we look a little bit further into this pumping and irrigation, if you guys could just say some prayers for us, we would be really grateful. And um, it's, a, it's a big lift. It is not illegal in Texas. It is um, completely warranted when it's meant for taking care of your livestock to pull from a river. So the pump would come from the river up the bluff 
and over into this pond. And the biggest problem so far that we're finding is the ability for it to pump upwards because it's a really big upwards pump is um, challenging. So we're working with um, a few people that we're talking to to try to come up with some solutions and I am pretty hopeful that we'll get there in the next couple weeks. But for now, extra grains, extra hay, and some prayers. And hopefully we can put a little weight on these guys. I wish that I could take some of my weight and give it to them. I could tell you that. Isn't that funny? <laughs> my winter weight's great. That's terrible, but it's true. I really, I gotta get back to the gym. Maybe they could come up with a fat transplant. That'd be really great. One where I take it off of me and give it to these guys. Until that somebody comes up with that though. This is our plan. All right, guys. I got a lot of work to do here today. So, thanks for joining me. I love you.